Greetings, welcome. This is an explanation of the virtual podium assignment. Um, if you are conducting this assignment, um, I'm assuming you are a student during the COVID-19 era, um, which is um, a curse and a blessing. Um, so uh, let me explain. So it has been a um, tragic time for everybody um you know when i'm as i'm recording this um i just found out that my cousin uh just passed away with complications from covid19 um she's like my grand cousin or something it's like my mom's cousin so she she was uh she was old and she had complications um but nonetheless um she still caught covid19 and i, I don't I really don't know what the, the end of her life was like. Um, so it's tragic in that sense. Um, but if you're taking public speaking and you have the universal fear of getting up in front of an audience, perhaps this is a blessing for you that you were able to take this class online. Um, there's no way um, I would probably ever be teaching this course otherwise. Uh, I'm an old school public speaking dude. I used to be a professional public speaker. Uh, I was a motivational speaker when I first graduated from undergrad. Um, it's my thing. I'm a, a doctor of rhetoric. I, I study public speaking, you know, going back thousands of years and public speaking is a medium. You know, it is a physical thing. You be there in front of your audience. You, you smell your audience, you feel their heat, right? Uh, you can see their reactions instantaneously. Uh, public speaking online is not really public speaking. It is, it is, you know, virtual presentation it's a presentation, that's for sure, but it's not public speaking. Uh, public speaking is a uh, a medium based uh, thing, and I think luckily, you know, many of you there will probably not be an asterisk on your transcripts for this. Um, so that's fortunate. You, you know, if if you're really absolutely terrified of public speaking, that's fine. I don't I don't see uh, giving a presentation virtually. As having that, you know, much maybe uh, much less of a anxiety type situation. Um, I can't imagine the anxiety is that much lower for people who do suffer from communication apprehension. Um, but um, in that sense, this is a blessing. So let me let me try to keep this assignment as brief as possible. It is a semester long project that serves in lieu of the three minute pitch, which is an assignment I used to have. Um, a torturous assignment, I guess, for some of my students. They have to memorize a three-minute speech that they draft over the course of the entire semester. Um, this will serve in lieu of that. Instead of working on the canon of memory, there are five canons of, of rhetoric. There is invention, memory, delivery, arrangement, and style. Uh, we will focus on delivery. The virtual podium assignment will... Um, draw, you know, um, important distinctions, um, when, when it comes to, uh, you know, meditating on, uh, delivery. So here's what you got to do. The first thing I want you to do is find a space. Okay. I want you to find a good space. I, I don't even know that I would say that the space that I'm in is, is, is all that great. Okay. Um, I don't like this. Well, where is it? This halo thing right here. Okay, I don't like the the frilly curtains from my daughter's like little um, window seat frilly sit session thing that she has. We just put them up. I thought it was cute. Um, it's it's a nice thing for a little girl to have to play around with. We we got it as a a gift from one of my colleagues. Um, so that was nice. Um, that chair in the background that's got to go. I got to get rid of that thing. Um, but besides that, it's not bad. It's boring. Okay. It should probably be more boring. Um, ideally I would, I would probably, if I were to set this up, I would try to get in front of that window. Um, and then it's, it's, it's super boring. That's, that's good. I the, the more boring, the better. Um, I have light in the front of my face. Okay. That's a consideration. I have a power outlet over here. So um, those are all things I take into consideration. That's the physical space. So in the guidelines, I list a series of questions 
um, that you can you can think about. Um, distractions are minimal up here. So in in my desk, my real desk, where I have my desk with the in the family area, um, my daughter is likely to. I mean, it's late at night now, so she's not doing anything, but. Um, she's likely to run up and you know sit on my lap and see who's there. This is what happened all during the the quarantine season. Is she would um, you know come and you know sit in my lap and she wanted to say hello to my students because um, people crave human interaction, right? So it's a distraction. I want to minimize distraction. So I'm upstairs. This is where I started working because I need to try to find you know minimal distractions, which is, you know, great for me, not so great for my wife who has to, you know, uh, field all the distractions. But sometimes, you know, sometimes my daughter says, you know what, enough of that, I'm going to pick the lock and I'm going to climb upstairs and I'm going to see what daddy's up to. What's up, dude? Um, That's part one. I want you to write no more than a page reflecting on the physical space that you have located. Um... I want you to tell me what kind of criteria you used, right? What things did you consider, right? What things did you have to adjust as the semester went on, right? So this is this is a semester-long endeavor. For all four speeches, I would like you to find the same location so you don't have to give yourself a headache, right? If you have, like, concert um, posters on the, the wall behind you, maybe you got to take them down for the semester so it's a little bit more boring, Okay. Um, I want you to take these speeches seriously. You, you've been, you know, blessed with an opportunity to sit at home and not have to stand in front of the class and feel your heart go like this, right? Um, so I would like you to um, take this part of the activity seriously and find a space virtually that makes everything beautiful, okay? Part two, um, you have two options. First option, you can come to the speech lab and chat with me, okay? Um, Depending on when you uh, you do this, um, so if it's in the fall, um, or you know, if if it's in the summer, I will just say that there are limited time spaces available where you know we don't have the full you know crew on all hands on deck doing tutoring in the speech lab, um, and even during the school year, we only have four people that work in the speech lab, so. You, you can't just wait till the last minute to do it. If you're going to do the speech lab thing, you're going to have to book an appointment in advance. We do preparation, okay? We do delivery, and we do anxiety. So one of those things, you can come to the speech lab and talk to me, talk to Dr. Jones, talk to Professor Altieri, talk to Professor Pallant, and we will be happy to help you in the speech lab. Now, um, you have to... Write a reflection on what the peer feedback process looks like in preparing for a virtual speech. That's important. What types of things did you learn in preparation for a virtual speech? Um, So you're going to have to write this reflection after your visit and after the speech that relates to the visit. So if you come for the narrative speech, okay, and you come to get help during the narrative speech, after the narrative speech, I'd like you to sit down and reflect on that peer feedback process. That's it. That's what I'm looking for. Option B is 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 an option that might might be for some people. I want you to interview somebody who spent their time during the COVID-19 lockdown working from home and using virtual meeting platforms, okay? Um, you know, WebEx, uh, Zoom, Skype, um, wherever people are having virtual meetings, If you have a friend or family member that had to do work or school from one of these platforms, I want you to interview them and find out what they thought worked well, what they thought didn't work well in these virtual platforms, and then I want you to write a synopsis of that interview. I don't want a transcript. I want you to um, process that material for me, that interview, and write what you learned from speaking to your friend about this, okay? Um, So that is part two. Part three is the virtual podium reflection. So part three, I want you to reflect on the technological equipment um, and and everything that you learned about speaking on a technological platform, okay? So um, for example, you know, maybe you, you had issues with connection and you had to learn about the speed test. What do those numbers mean? What do the download and upload numbers mean, okay? 
Why is a headset important? You should all be speaking with headsets. Why is it important? Tell me what you learned about that. Uh, you've probably been in another class where you're on the, the computer with somebody and somebody's talking and they're going, so now I would like to... <laughs> Some strange echo sound. It's because they're not wearing a headset. You've got to wear a headset when you do virtual things, okay? I want you to, you know, make observations on your classmates. What things did you observe that helped you improve your speeches? What part of the virtual podium or the virtual platform um, did you like? What didn't you like? What worked? What didn't work? Um, what were the technological things that um, made your life uh, a living hell? What did you see that distracted you in other people's speeches? Um, what were things that were out of your control that you wish you could have controlled in your technology? Do you have an old laptop? So in my, the laptop that I, I use for, you know, uh, my personal work and my, my part-time work that I have, um, always runs out of memory. I wish I was a millionaire. I wish I trusted the cloud to put all of my files in the cloud. I wish I had, you know... 18 terabyte, you know, hard drive sitting all up in a row, I could just plug in and it made it easy to just back up everything and I had a clean computer. I wish I trusted hard drives like that, but I have hard drives fail on me all the time, right? I wish I was diligent enough to back up space. My hard drive is always out of room. That's a technological issue that I have, right? Some people have dirty webcams because they put a little piece of tape on it because they don't want the CIA to see them when they're picking their nose or whatever, okay? So um, I want you to, you know, write about that. You know, maybe I should use some alcohol to clean the, the webcam or whatever. I want you to talk about these little things that you did with the technology. Why is the virtual platform different than the physical platform? Obviously, you're not going to have a good comparison when it when it comes to that because, you, you know, we don't have an in-person type meeting, but you've, you've obviously given speeches before in some of your classes, whether it be high school, whether it be a class you had two semesters ago in college. I want you to talk about that, okay? That's your final reflection. Three pages maximum, no more. Turn it in after you give your last speech. Don't wait till the last minute to write this thing, okay? So part one, find a ver physical space and reflect on that space, okay? Part two, you have option A, option B. Either go to the speech lab or interview one of your friends or family members that had uh, worked on the virtual platform during COVID-19 and you know ask them how it went, what their observations were. Get some outside feedback. Get some peer feedback on that. Last thing, part three, I want you to reflect on that technology. No more than three pages. So that's it. Start working on that today, okay? So you you have to think about that for the rest of the semester. Start working on that because you got to get that you got to get started on that before the first speech. So before the first speech, you should have a pretty good space selected already for um, for your first speech. So thank you.